The cliffs running west from Sulcombe's Bolt Head are among South Devon's most spectacular. It's a dramatic coast of rocky pinnacles and green rolling meadows, with barely a sign of human habitation. A seascape to rival anything I've seen on my travels. Beautiful on a day like today, but in unfriendly weather, many a vessel has been wrecked along this coast. And at the easterly end, tucked in behind Bolt Tail Headland, lies Hope Cove. If you leave the busy Sulcombe Estuary and head just a few miles to the west along some stunning Devon coastline, you come to Hope Cove, and it's as different to Sulcombe as it possibly could be. Just a small little cove, occasional boats come here to anchor for a couple of hours. You've got a beach, a slipway, a pub, and some gorgeous bathing water. And it's a particularly good place to come if there's a bit of an easterly blowing, because it's well protected from that. change as soon as you go under the Tamar Bridge is incredible. You leave behind the industrial naval dockyards and you're in open Devon countryside. The river's wide, wide open, but in fact it's extremely shallow. You've got to just follow the channel to come through here. It's also proving an adage which I have, which is the further up any river you go, the quirkier the boats are, the less they're used, the more homemade they are. And that's certainly being proved right as we go further and further up the Tamar the wide, gently flowing Tamar has to be navigated carefully. Mud banks are everywhere. But soon the river narrows, and this is when it becomes truly intriguing. A tidal river. In these narrow upper reaches, the tides are funneled in and run fast. I estimated them running at about three knots. From its source high in the moors to the sea, the river is around 60 miles long, and many of the villages in these upper reaches have had fascinating histories. Today a sleepy backwater, Calstock's heyday was in the 19th century, when it was a booming mining town, with a population of around 7,000. Copper, tin, tungsten, and even silver were mined here, and there was a granite quarry nearby. These were then all shipped downstream from the town's quay. And even further upstream, Morwellham Quay has been a port for over 1,000 years. Hard to believe now, but this was once the greatest copper port in Queen Victoria's empire. Cruising back downstream, it certainly felt as if we had explored another of Devon's secrets in a most unexpected location. The Tamar is one of several British rivers whose name is believed to be derived from an ancient river word, apparently meaning dark flowing, and which it shares with the River Thames among others. It's easy to see why early people adopted the name, as the Tamar runs thick and treacly with mud. Bigbury Bay stretches in an eight-mile arc from Hope Cove to Plymouth Sound and is blessed by three river estuaries, all extremely different. For me, the hidden gem among this trio of rivers lies midway between them. The River Erm is an absolute gem of Devon's south coast. And the reason for that, it has just not been developed in any way at all. It totally dries out on the tides so you're not going to be able to moor here, but it's a great place, anything over half tide, to come in, chill, anchor, have a picnic, swim, play, do what you want. The virtually empty beach is all the way along either side of it, and it's surrounded by beautiful, lush Devon farmland. The fact that it's so shallow has been the salvation of the River Urn, as it has not suffered from development, and is, as a result, one of South Devon's most pristine estuaries and has been designated an area of outstanding natural beauty. At low tide, the entrance dries totally, and only on a rising tide is it possible to explore just a little way in. 
When I started out on this project to try to discover Secret Devon, I almost gave up on the first day. I'm so glad that I persevered, because heading back towards Cornwall, just south of Solcombe, we met with a pod of pilot whales, something I've never seen in British waters in around 30 years of boating. Intriguing rivers, an abandoned village, miles of deserted sand beach with a poignant wartime history, a historic and iconic lighthouse, quiet anchorages, and some awesome wildlife encounters. The perfect end to our Devon adventure.